Hey, Philadelphia, welcome to the Seth Joyner Show. No live guests in studio today. Instead, I'm talking football after that Monday night performance. Time for my game breakdown. The Eagles dominated the Minnesota Vikings on Monday Night Football 7-24, and I think it's safe to begin to remove doubt about Jalen Hurts being the guy. Monday night, he exhibited all the intangibles you want to see in a starting quarterback. Good pocket presence, decision-making, accuracy, arm strength, mobility, and the ability to convert third downs with his arms and his legs. 26 for 31 for 332 yards passing, one touchdown, 11 runs for 57 yards, and two rushing touchdowns versus one interceptions, one turnover in the last eight quarters of football. He targeted Devontae Smith and got him involved early and spread the ball around to eight different receivers. I like how they are balancing up their offense, even if Jalen Hurts is still running the football. Miles Sanders, 17 carries for 80 yards, 4.7 yards per carry. Next, I'm impressed with Nick Sirianni and Shane Steichen. Sirianni for stepping back and empowering Steichen. Steichen for being creative and a dynamic play caller and coordinator. And lastly, props to Jonathan Gannon, believe it or not. We've been crying for the longest for him to be a much more aggressive play caller, to trust your corners at the line of scrimmage to be more aggressive, for Slade to lock down Justin Jefferson, to bring more pressure versus quarterbacks like Cousins, to speed up his clock, to force mistakes and turnovers. The D-line and linebackers did an outstanding job shutting down Cook, applying pressure in the passing game, and when called upon, to blitz or to cover. Coming up, Brian Mitchell joins me to break down the upcoming Eagles versus Commanders matchup. Special thanks to our show sponsor, Bridgeview Partners. Bridgeview Partners specialize in IT service management and helping businesses separate from their competition. Go to bridgeviewpartners.com and let them know Seth Joyner sent you. Bridgeview Partners Strategic IT Consulting and Services saving clients money and time by optimizing enterprise systems for over 10 years now. If you're an IT professional, what are you waiting for? Contact the very experienced team at Bridgeview Partners. These guys have an awesome reputation in the Philadelphia market for their thought leadership specializing in infrastructure optimization and IT service management for healthcare, retail, finance organizations, and many others. Go to bridgeviewpartners.com to learn more and go Eagles! This car is a steal. Hey, Seth, let's do a deal and I'll throw in this great gift. <laughs> is that the way you used to buy a car? Forget about it. Get to Davis Honda in Burlington. Davis Honda has over 300 pre-owned vehicles right now. Come see why Davis Honda won Best of Burlington six years in a row. I'm Seth Jordan and I drive a Davis Honda. Seth, Caitlin, you forgot your great gift. <laughs> Former Eagles linebacker Seth Joyner here to tell you about Artie Clear kitchens, baths, drywall, and roofing. For kitchens and bathrooms, roofing, windows, and other home improvement needs, call my friend Artie Clear. Get 100% no money down financing with payments as low as $59 per month. The first 59 calls will also receive a $400 discount on their first order. And if you're a senior citizen, double. Look for Artie's ad in the Metro. Call today, Artie Clear kitchens, baths, drywall, and roofing. Welcome back. And joining me now is one of, my, one of the most fiercest competitors that I ever played against. Running back slash punt, kick returner for the Commanders, the Eagles, and the Giants. He's currently a radio and TV analyst in the D.C. area. Please help me welcome Brian Mitchell, better known to you guys as B. Mitch. B. Mitch, how you doing, my brother? What's up, Seth? How you doing, man? Hey, listen, always great, man. Always great. Um, oh, yeah. You guys are getting started. You're one and one down there. A lot of excitement around the football team. The big question is Carson Wentz and, um, and his play through the first two weeks. How is he being perceived and received inside and outside the locker room in D.C.? 
Well, I think right now everybody's happy about the way he's played uh, for the most part. Uh, you know, this this uh, city has had so many quarterbacks in the last 20 years that anybody that steps in could be as good as what we already had. So Carson Wentz gets a lot of credit. But I look at those games a lot different than most people do. You know, in the first game he did throw two interceptions. He threw four touchdowns, but he threw two interceptions. And they were interceptions that interceptions he shouldn't have thrown. Uh, the last game he played against Detroit, you look at that game and Detroit had a, a, a big enough uh, lead where they started to play a little prevent. And you can see Washington started coming back, but then they'll go right back and score a touchdown. They didn't respect the defense at all. So he got a lot of what uh, I would say what, what Philly got against Detroit where, you know, they were at that game, they're winning. Detroit, Philly started to play a little prevent. Detroit had a lot of yards and points late in the football game. But what difference does it make? You lost the game. And I look at Carson like that. Right now, he's been a guy who's shown that he's better than what we've had, but he hasn't shown that he's the best quarterback that Washington ever had. What's the biggest plus and minus to his game that you see right now? The biggest plus is that he gets the ball down the field. He can stretch the field like the other guys couldn't. You know, he, he used his legs some in the second game. But I think the, the minus for him is he holds the ball very long. He wants to throw the ball down the field. And sometimes he gets sacked and it's blamed on the offensive line is because he holds the ball five seconds. And I don't think anybody's going to block that long. But if he can start getting the ball, in that first game, I think Scott Turner had a great game plan. They got a lot of quick screens. They got the ball out of his hands quickly and they shared it around. So it kept Jacksonville off balance. But ultimately, as I just watched Philadelphia play, their defense is a lot better than anything that they've seen thus far. And when you make him hold the ball and you have people that can cover those receivers that they have here, which I think they watch and have a very, very good uh, slew of our receivers now, you can make those guys and cover them one-on-one. -on -one. Now he holds the ball even longer, which gives you a chance to get home. B. Mitch, you know what, through – and you just mentioned it, through um, the first couple of games, Scott Turner's put a lot on Carson Wentz's plate to utilize all Washington's weapons, you know, first-round draft pick Johan Dotson, um, McLaren, Samuels, McKissick, and Gibson out the backfield, and then Logan Thomas at the tight end position. Um, is that too much? Is that just too much to put on Carson's plate, you know, at this point in time? Well, you're a guy that got a hundred and some million dollar contract at one point. You were the second pick in the draft, uh, and you were brought here in Washington, and they said that you're their guy. So anything they put on this plate is deserving. You know, I think uh, Ron Rivera said over and over again, he's the guy that they wanted. So now you have him. So he should be able to handle those things. I still believe you need to have a legitimate running game to help protect him some. And McKissick is very good out the backfield. He doesn't run the ball as effectively as I think they would like. That's why they drafted Brian Robinson. But also when you look, I'm not McKissick talking about Gibson, but when Gibson, when he runs the ball, sometimes he lets it go. <laughs> and I think that kind of scares him some. So until they get a legitimate running game, I think Carson's going to have to do it, but I don't think that you can sustain him throwing the ball over 40 times a week and continually win because we know as good as he can be, that's the other side. <laughs> Listen, there's no doubt about it, and, and you know, that is a lot of passes throughout two games. Just you, you think about this, this statistic. He's thrown the ball 87 times versus 37 call runs. Listen, yeah. he's thrown the ball for two 300-yard games. That's great, but seven – touchdowns versus three interceptions again mm -hmm. that m might not be sustainable for this for this offense long term because you know like I know the more you put the ball in the air the more mm -hmm. and especially when you're out of balance like this the more yeah. opportunities you have for bad things to happen I think also when you look at it the defense is not playing according to the way they thought they would play so if your defense can't stop anybody you keep putting it in the air as they did in the first half against Detroit Three and out, three and out, three and out. They get the ball to Detroit. They go down and they get scored. The defense couldn't stop anybody, and I think that's the risk that they take. This is a point, and they're at a point now where you got to run a methodical offense where you can run the ball, pass the ball, keep your defense fresh because I believe this defense starting to take on some uh, injuries now. And in offensive line, they're taking on some injuries. You start to get those little nicks, and then now you got to protect them. And that's the thing that scares me. They wanted to get everybody to week one. <laughs> you know, we grew up in an era where we we went to we went to work. We we practiced hard and we try to get ready to play a season. In this new day and age, they want to get everybody to week one. Now they got the week one. They they've already lost three or four people in the first two weeks. That's the problem when you when you don't really go hard in training camp 
And I, I, I don't think Philly went very soft. Mm-mm. So we'll see how it goes. But it's going to come down to who's conditioned the best and who has the most uh, healthy bodies. Well, listen, I, you know, on the defensive ball, I want to get over there right quick. You know, they've given up some yards. They've given up some points. Once upon a time, they was touted as one of the top defensive lines in all of pro football with five first rounders. Um, where are they at and what do they need to do to improve where they are right now? Well, they were tired of that because they were first rounders, but we all know you don't have to be a first rounder to be a great player. And they, I don't think they ever lived up to it. You know, the whole thing for me right now is that, you know, Chase Young is hurt. Montez Sweat, you know, he's getting close, but he's not getting there. Jonathan Allen is banged up a little bit too. Deron Payne has been the best uh, down lineman they had. Uh, Fedarian Mathis was a young guy they drafted this year from Alabama. He got hurt, so I think he's out for the season. They got rid of some depth in Ioannidis. And also Tim Settle. Those guys are now uh, – that Tim Settle is in Buffalo. Ionis is going away. So now you have these guys, and you have to make sure you play with them. So um, they have to find out – Ron said they got to get on the same page. I can't understand three years into your offense I and mean, your defense, you know, you're not on the same page. But they haven't had a lot of great play from the linebackers. You know as a former linebacker, when your D lineman in front of you are playing well, you fill in those gaps. You have to have the right fit right. to help them out. They haven't gotten that. So now I believe the D linemen are trying to do everything. And by them trying to do everything, they're not, ne- they're ne- not necessarily doing their job at a high level, and that's causing a lot of problems for them. B, I need a whole hour, man, to chop this thing up with you. But listen, I appreciate, I appreciate your time and your insight. All right, thanks for being with me. Listen, on the other side, fantasy football expert and handicapping expert Brad Feinberg joins me to help set your rosters and pick your winners for week three. This segment is sponsored by Davis Honda. I drive a Davis Honda, and you should too. Mandrakia Law, attorneys you can trust, we get results. When you need an attorney, you need an experienced trial lawyer who will never settle for less, who's not afraid to try your case, will fight for you and keep you informed. Charles Mandraki and the team at Mandrakia Law have decades of experience. They are ethical but aggressive. Personal injury, DUI or DWI, commercial or civil litigation, criminal defense, experience matters. Visit the website mmattorneys.com and remember the name. Mandrakia Law, attorneys you can trust, we get results. This car is a steal. Hey, Seth. Let's do a deal and I'll throw in this great gift. <laughs> is that the way you used to buy a car? Forget about it. Get to Davis Honda in Burlington. Davis Honda has over 300 pre-owned vehicles right now. Come see why Davis Honda won Best of Burlington six years in a row. I'm Seth Joyner and I drive a Davis Honda. Seth, Caitlin, you forgot your great gift. <laughs> Birds fans, if you understand that success is built on trusted relationships and reliable performance, Mid Penn Bank is the right bank for you. We're on a mission to prove that the right bankers can make a big difference and work harder for you. With financial centers strategically located to serve the greater Philadelphia area, we are ready to bring you the best in commercial and personal banking. Visit midpenbank.com or call the number on your screen. Mid Penn Bank, the right bank for you. Member FDIC. Go Eagles! Welcome back. Now, for you guys who are into fantasy football and a little bit of betting, joining me on my weekly fantasy picks, my good friend, Brad Feinberg. Brad, how you doing, my man? Outstanding, Seth. Great game for the Eagles last week. Let's awesome. see if they can replicate it this week. Absolutely awesome. <laughs> okay, so let's jump right into it. Let's yep. talk about your underrated fantasy players as well as your underrated defense for week three. Underrated look, Seth, one of the cheapest quarterbacks this week is Matt Ryan. Now, I get, listen, what we saw last week, we saw him getting shut out, right, against the lowly, well, maybe not so lowly, Jacksonville Jaguars. Did absolutely nothing. But now, Chance Michael Pittman comes back. He's one of the cheapest quarterbacks on the board. They're playing Kansas City. You know points are going to be scored by Kansas City. I'm expecting a lot of Matt Ryan. 
passing attempts, maybe more so than the normal game, because they're going to need to keep up with the Chiefs in this game. Him being the lowest priced quarterback, I think that's a value. Uh, running back, Damian Pierce of the Texans, they didn't have any of Rex Burkhead last week. In week one, Burkhead got 72% of the snaps. Last week, it was all Pierce. And Pierce this week, very winnable game against the Bears. Um, I, I think he's a steal at his low price this week. Wide receiver, we're going to see it this week. Curtis Samuel of the Washington football team. Look, here's a, a guy that, that had all the hype. Ironically enough, was compared to Debo Samuel in a lot of ways. Could run the ball, could receive the ball. He's been targeted more than their team than anyone else. Uh, I expect them not to be able to run the ball much. I think Samuel at a cheap price is a great price. Uh, and then defense. I'm going to say the Jacksonville Jaguars. Seth. Look, they're going against the Chargers. Great team, but the Jaguars are about the cheapest defense you can get this week. Justin Herbert playing with broken ribs or separated cartilage. Like I know football players are the toughest people in the world, but that hurt that has to hurt your performance a little bit, in my opinion. Plus Keenan Allen may be out. So those would be my underrated guys of the week. Let's jump over to the overrated. Let's talk about yeah. those overrated players and the overrated defense as well. You got it, my friend. Well, look, overrated Hall of Fame player, Seth. But Aaron Rodgers this week, he is going against Tampa Bay. And I look watching Green Bay play. It's Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. I don't see much in terms of the passing game. Not that he's lost much of his abilities. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is for a guy who costs a lot of money, I'm not prepared to say he's going to be able to have a good game against a better, solid Tampa Bay defense. Running back this week, overrated. <laughs> Derrick Henry, look, Seth, he's coming off a serious foot injury. He had that horrible playoff game against the Bengals. He's looked horrible in two straight games. Uh, I don't. He's still one of the highest-priced guys. I can't back him until he shoots me. He's healthy. And then receiver, Seth, we talked about how we like Curtis Samuel. Well, if we like Curtis Samuel, there's a chance we're not going to like Terry McLaurin because I have found, in my opinion, it seems like Samuel's taking a lot of McLaurin's shine away, a lot of his luster away. Still really like the player, but he's very expensive. I think he's too overrated based on what he's done in the past when Samuel wasn't there. And then defense, look, we talked about the opposite way. I'm I'm going to say the Chargers defense is overrated, the most expensive defense this week. But I think Jacksonville is an improved team, Seth, and I think Trevor Lawrence and company, they'll be able to score, I think, at least around 20 points or so. I don't, I'm not expecting a dominant Chargers performance. Now, for those who like to wager a little something on the game to keep their Sundays and football games interesting, give me your top four picks for this week. Seth, I'm going to start out, and again, I faded them last week and I was wrong. But I'm going to fade them again this week. I'm going to fade the Eagles Look, this line opened at four, Seth, because of that dominant performance. It's up to six and a half. Look, we know road division games are tough. And, Seth, you played in the league a lot of years. and you know, It's hard to be emotionally up for every single game. That was a huge Monday night game. Everyone's patting them on their back, telling them the best team in the league now. Six and a half points. Carson Wentz. I'm not going to see if they get full revenge, but I think they're good enough to cover the six and a half point spread. Uh, Arizona versus the Rams. I think the points here again, Seth, you can get four points. The Rams, to me, have not looked good in either one of their two games. I think they've looked very mediocre. Kyler Murray is spectacular. That's a talk about revenge. They got smoked in last year's playoff game. I think that's going to be a tight game. Again, I would have made that line closer to two and a half or three. I'm going to take Arizona getting four points. Here's a game to me. I don't know who's going to win, but if I don't know who's going to win, give me the three points. Uh, Carolina versus the Saints. Both teams had tough losses last week. Carolina has lost two heartbreaking games that went down basically to the last play. I think it's a 50-50 game. I would have made this line closer to pick them. I, mean, I actually think Carolina has been winning the game outright. Give me the three with Carolina. And then one more, Seth. You're not as good as you last see, right? And you're not as bad as you last see. We just watched a Monday night game where the Eagles look like the Super Bowl champions and the Minnesota Vikings look like the worst team in the league. Now they're coming at home after just a, an accumulating performance against an improved Lions team that's very good offensively. But I think Minnesota will match up incredibly well on their offensive side of the ball. This line opened at seven and a half, Seth. Now down to six because of that poor, poor performance. I'm going to take Minnesota laying the six. Hey, Brad, thanks. Good stuff as always. Before I say goodbye, my picks for this week's Eagles versus Carson and the Commanders matchup when I come back. Special thanks to Strategic Sports Marketing. They've taken care of me for 15 years. They'll do the same for you.
For over 20 years now, Strategic Sports Marketing has been a leader in the sports industry. With deep relationship among athletes and companies of all sizes, SSM knows what it takes to build effective partnerships. They've been helping me for 15 years now. From speaking engagements and endorsement deals to special guest appearances and much more, no budget is considered too small. And check out SSM's sister company at sportsvaultshop.com where you'll find everything for your gift-giving needs. Keep an eye out for upcoming coupon codes exclusive to the Seth Joyner Show. Former Eagles linebacker Seth Joyner here to tell you about Artie Clear kitchens, baths, drywall, and roofing. For kitchens and bathrooms, roofing, windows, and other home improvement needs, call my friend Artie Clear. Get 100% no money down financing with payments as low as $59 per month. The first 59 calls will also receive a $400 discount on their first order. And if you're a senior citizen, double. Look for Artie's ad in the Metro. Call today, Artie Clear, kitchens, baths, drywall, and roof. Mandrakia Law. Attorneys you can trust, we get results. When you need an attorney, you need an experienced trial lawyer who will never settle for less, who's not afraid to try your case, will fight for you and keep you informed. Charles Mandraki and the team at Mandrakia Law have decades of experience. They are ethical but aggressive. Personal injury, DUI or DWI, commercial or civil litigation, criminal defense, experience matters. Visit the website mmattorneys.com and remember the name. Mandrakia Law. Attorneys you can trust, we get results. This car is a steal. Hey, Seth, let's do a deal and I'll throw in this great gift. <laughs> is that the way you used to buy a car? Forget about it. Get to Davis Honda in Burlington. Davis Honda has over 300 pre-owned vehicles right now. Come see why Davis Honda won Best of Burlington six years in a row. I'm Seth Jordan and I drive a Davis Honda. Seth, Caitlin, you forgot your great gift. <laughs> Welcome back. The Eagles can really cement a solid start to this season with a win versus Washington. The keys, in my opinion, will be more of what we saw on Monday night, a balanced and efficient offense and a dominant defense. Can they get up on a short week? I say yes, in a dominating fashion, no less. The Eagles win 32-20. to That's the show for this week. Join me next week as we look back on the commanders and look ahead to week four and the return of Duck Peterson to the link. Thank you for tuning in. Take care. See you next week on The Seth Joyner Show. Bridgeview Partners Strategic IT Consulting and Services saving clients money and time by optimizing enterprise systems for over 10 years now. If you're an IT professional, what are you waiting for? Contact the very experienced team at Bridgeview Partners. These guys have an awesome reputation in the Philadelphia market for their thought leadership, specializing in infrastructure optimization and IT service management for healthcare, retail, finance organizations, and many others. Go to bridgeviewpartners.com to learn more and go Eagles. This car is a steal. Hey Seth, let's do a deal and I'll throw in this great gift. <laughs> Is that the way you used to buy a car? Forget about it. Get to Davis Honda in Burlington. Davis Honda has over 300 pre-owned vehicles right now. Come see why Davis Honda won Best of Burlington six years in a row. I'm Seth Joyner, and I drive a Davis Honda. Seth, Caitlin, you forgot your great gift. <laughs> Birds fans, if you understand that success is built on trusted relationships and reliable performance, Mid Penn Bank is the right bank for you. We're on a mission to prove that the right bankers can make a big difference and work harder for you. With financial centers strategically located to serve the greater Philadelphia area, we are ready to bring you the best in commercial and personal banking. Visit midpenbank.com or call the number on your screen. Mid Penn Bank, the right bank for you. Member FDIC. Go Eagles!